Why 11? Uh, because on already have betrayed him by this point and uh, he hanged himself. Uh, so there are 11 disciples in front of him and he is speaking. And Bible says in verse 18, uh, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So, um, as, as we have described that, you know, Jesus Christ is speaking these words to the disciples. And in front of him, there are 11 disciples standing. And uh, who were these 11 disciples? Do you remember? Who were they? I mean, were they from a, a rich family? Or the, from a very famous family or famous people? No, they are very humble people, right? They are very humble people, they are very poor people, um, not very educated, you know. Uh, some of them are fishermen, so some of them are desk collectors. That maybe, as you remember that, you know, Jesus went to the sea and then he saw that uh, Peter and others are, you know, fishing. And then he said, well, I will make you fishers of men, follow me. And these people, they followed Jesus Christ. And then he went to synagogue and he saw that Matthew was collecting, collecting the tax. And he said, Matthew, follow me. And by this way, he, is, he, he collected or called these disciples into the ministry. So Jesus Christ called verbally, verbally, uh, all these disciples into the ministry. And he called them, he trained them up, he showed him them his power and he showed them that he is the son of God and, and now in this, in this point he is asking them, okay, now you have to go and share the gospel to the uttermost part of the world. So, uh, so uh, this is called the Great Commission and when we apply these things in our life, that comes with responsibility, right? That, that comes with responsibility. So we we know about the Great Commission should be fulfilled with great responsibilities. The Great Commission should be fulfilled with great responsibilities. Are we responsible? Are we responsible at the Great Commission? You know, uh, some of you here already being called in the ministry, uh, and you know that God had ensured that in your heart already. Or probably some of you already uh, already praying for the ministry, and and you know we should have this specific responsibility for this great commission. You know, in verse 19, Jesus Christ is telling the uh, disciples, "Okay, go, uh, eat therefore teach all nations and baptizing them." So we we see three four commands here in verse 19, right? Go, eat therefore teach all nations and baptizing them. Three four. Uh, common commandments Jesus Christ is giving and when Jesus Christ is telling them okay go go doesn't mean that well uh, they have to wait for a while right it's a very simple thing go means right away you should go right yeah. uh, when Jesus Christ is speaking to the disciples and he's commanding them okay go eat therefore this the disciples did not wait for anything else uh -huh. you know Jesus Christ ascended to heaven and they work right away that means go uh, that's, that's the present tense, go! You know, Jesus Christ did not tell here, well, you go, but talk with your parents first. Jesus Christ did not tell here, well, you go, think of your money first. Think of your job first. Think of your, uh, you know, uh, uh, your fame first. You know, some of us are already called in the ministry here. And, and we are still thinking of our family. We are still thinking of our money. We are still thinking of our job. We're still thinking of our business and all other things, all other worldly things that we need. But as, as I have told you before, you know, if you are in the ministry, if you are called by the Lord Jesus Christ or by your God, you know, you would be provided everything. Everything you would be provided. So we have a great, great divine mandate, we have a divine mandate. In verse 19 we can see that Jesus Christ is giving this mandate, giving this command uh, to the disciples. And we have this mandate too in our life that, you know, we should share, we should, you know, live uprightly for the Lord. So when Jesus Christ gives this mandate, we have to, we have this responsibility to pray. 
pray for the liberals, you know, pray for our, our, ourselves, you know, you should pray for yourselves that how Lord wants you to be served in the ministry. You know, Lord, what do you want me to do in the ministry? What do you want me to do? You know, everybody of us here have different skills. You know, probably some of you are doctors, some of you are engineers, some of you, uh, you are teachers. You know, Lord wants you to use your skill and you have to pray for that. You have to pray for that, that Lord, how do you want me to be used in the ministry? We, this is our responsibility to pray, you know. In, in Matthew 9, Jesus Christ is directly commanding to the disciples, well, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. And who is this Lord of the harvest? That is God. Pray to God that He will send forth more missionaries, more laborers into His harvest. And as we see in Bangladesh, as you saw in our video presentation, and the, the harvest is really plant to us. There are maraming tao, there are a lot of people, they are dying without Christ. And we need more people, more missionaries over there. We need you to go there, brethren. It involves our lifestyle too, you know. This is our responsibility to lead our lifestyle. Uh, you know, we, we have seen a lot of, a lot of believers that uh, when they come to the church and then uh, then they show themselves so holy in front of the pastors in front of the fellow brethren but but when they are outside of the church they are so different you know their musics are different their clothing are different their behavior has been changed we have seen that what kind of lifestyle uh, lifestyle are you leading outside of the church you know you don't need to tell people in your barangay in your neighborhood that hey i am a christian People would see your faithfulness, people would see your lifestyle and they would tell and that man and that woman or, or you know that young guy, that young lady is a Christian. Through your lifestyle you can share the gospel. This is our responsibility to live a good lifestyle. This is our responsibility to use our lips too. You know, if I ask you that how many of you you know, love your parents, how many of you love your uh, neighbors, how many of you love your relatives and you know, everybody of us will raise our hands, right? We love people, but you know, we don't want to share the gospel to them. We don't want to use the leaves to them. Probably you have fellow colleagues, fellow friends, fellow relatives, they are unsaved. And, and you know, you are not willing to use your lips. You are not willing to share the gospel to them, speak up to them. And do you know why? First reason is, first reason is, you know, you don't care. Sometimes we don't care. We don't care about Jesus Christ. We don't care about the souls. We don't care about the command that Jesus Christ is giving to us. And reason number two, we are ashamed. We are ashamed. We think, oh well, what will my fellow uh, colleague or what will my uh, relative think about me if I share the gospel to them? You know, we are ashamed. And Paul said in Romans 1 16 that for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth. And if you see the context of Romans 1, uh, you know, uh, in verse 15, uh, uh, Apostle Paul was talking about Rome. He is telling that I will go to Rome to share the gospel in verse 15. And because in Rome, on that time, Rome was a significant place and Rome was a persecuted place and nobody wants to go to Rome because Roman government is persecuting the Christians and Christians are fleeing from the Rome. And on that time, Apostle Paul was telling, well, I will go. I will go to share the gospel to Rome and in verse 16 he is telling for I am not ashamed for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first also to the Greek so Apostle Paul was dealing the same thing you know people were ashamed of the gospel of Christ and does the same thing in our life too brethren you know we are ashamed to share the gospel if you love your brothers, if you love your uh, relatives, if you love your friends, you should share the gospel to the people. Yeah. You know, how many of you know D.L. Moody? D.L. Moody. Uh, he was a great preacher, early 1800. 
and he was a businessman. He was a businessman, and in early 1800, he made in a year like five thousand dollars in a year. Can you imagine? 1800 in a year, five thousand dollars means how much now? That would be like 50 million, right? So just think that that guy was a businessman and he made in a year $5,000 on the time and he, God had called him in the ministry and he stepped down from his business, from his position and the next year, in a year, he earned $100 only. But he was happy about that. And his commitment to the Lord was, well, I will share the gospel at least one person in a day. And, and you know, there was, a Saturday, there was a day, it was Saturday, and he was not able to share the gospel to anybody. And he saw a guy and he asked, hey friend, can I talk with you? And he said, yes. And said, you know, uh, are you a Christian? And that guy got so angry with D.L. Moody. He said, you are a bad guy. You are such a bad guy I have ever seen in my life. They were asking in front of everybody if I am a Christian or not. You can just get lost from here. So D.L. Moody left and the following day was Sunday and then this guy went to the church to complain about D.L. Moody to the pastor. Said, Pastor, your preacher D.L. Moody is a bad guy. Such a bad guy I have ever seen in my life. Yesterday in front of everybody he was asking me that if I am a Christian or not. And he cursed him so badly and he insulted him. And D.L. Moody was so heartbroken because he was insulted in front of the fellow brother, in front of the pastor. And after six months, D.L. Moody was you know, resting in his room and he heard a knock. And he opened the door. He saw this guy who cursed him, who had insulted him six months ago, standing. And was crying and was tearing. And was telling to D.L. Moody, hey D.L. Moody, I'm so sorry that six months ago I have cursed you. Six months ago I have insulted you. But do you know what? The day you have asked me that if I am a Christian or not, from that day until now, I have no peace in my heart. Please tell me, please tell me whatever you wanted me to tell. Whatever you wanted to tell me. And D.L. Moody was able to share the gospel to this guy and this guy got saved and he became a greater Sunday school teacher of the church. You know, so, you know, my point here is, you know, it's D.L. Moody who just asked this guy that are you a Christian or not? And it's God who saved this person, right? D.L. Moody saw a seed that person's heard and God is the one who grew that seed and it, it, it was fulfilled and, and it bears fruits. You know, so brother, it's not us who can do anything. We have no ability to do anything. It's God who can do everything, right? Amen. So our duty to, our responsibility is to, is to share the gospel to the people so they would be get, get saved. We should not be ashamed. We should care about the souls that are dying without Christ. Amen. So we have this divine mandate. We have a divine message too. In verse 19, you can see that now, verse 20, Jesus Christ is commenting again that teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And, and uh, you know, in verse 19 already, Jesus Christ told that teach them, but in verse 20, he, he is telling again, teaching them to observe all things. That means, you know, you just don't go and share the gospel and leave them out. You know, make disciples, he is telling make disciples and teach them to observe all things. That means, Teach them the right doctrine. Teach them who am I. Um, think of an example. If somebody asked me that, uh, if somebody told, tell me that, well, I saw Pastor Jeremiah going to Mormon church. Or probably they would tell the same thing to you. You know, we saw Pastor Jeremiah going to Mormon church. Are you going to believe that? Are you going to believe that? No. He's a Baptist preacher. He's a Baptist pastor. Why, why would he go to the Mormon church? Yeah. <laughs> probably, probably they are talking about somebody else, right? Somebody named Jeremiah too. You know, if you do not know about Jesus Christ, if you do not know personal Jesus Christ, you cannot believe on him. You know, I was, I was uh, sharing the gospel in Ethiopia University of the Philippines a long time ago. Uh, in 2008, I think. 
and I was the first year student on that time. And my pastor asked me, well, you should go to the University of the Philippines because you have a hard time to speak Tagalog. So I went to the University of the Philippines, shared the gospel, passed out the tracks of end time. There was one time I went to the UP and then I saw a guy, I passed the track to him and he gets so interested to talk with me. And this guy knows a lot from the Bible. You know, whenever I, uh, when I passed the track to him and he started talking with me, and he started reciting verses, you know, he started reciting verses from Romans, then went to the Gospels and then finally finished with the Revelation, you know. So, uh, tako tako, you know, I was so afraid and I was uh, so disappointed because I was the first year student, I did not know a lot of verses. So, instead of, uh, you know, I am evangelizing him, he is kind of evangelizing me. And, uh, and finally I told him that, you know, uh, he should, he should believe that Jesus Christ died for you and uh, he was buried according to 1st Corinthians 15 to 4 and he should, he should believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and he was buried and that he was uh, after three days he rose up again and do you know what this guy said? this guy said well I believe that I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sin but I never believe that Jesus Christ is God do you think this guy is saved? Jesus Christ is 100% God and 100% human. Tama ba ako? Hindi po siya kalahating Diyos, kalahating tao, di ba? Hindi po. He is not 50 50. He is 100% God and 100% human, di ba? In Colossians 1 16, a while ago we saw that for Him and through Him everything is created, right? All the things are created by Him and for Him. And He was God, right? When, uh, uh, well, he was God in heaven, but when he came to this earth, was he God? He was God, still he is God, right? But, but he limited his power, uh, his godly power in the earth, right? According to Philippians 2, uh, you know, Apostle Paul was telling in verse 5 to 8 that, you know, Jesus Christ limited his power. And his, uh, Apostle Paul was telling, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and being in the likeness of man. So Apostle Paul was telling in Philippians 2 that, well, Jesus Christ is God, was God in, in the heaven, and he came to this earth, and he became man. And not only man, he became servant. And not only servant, he was crucified for our sins. So if anybody doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is not God or not human, that person is not saved. So you have to know, you have to teach them the right doctrine about Jesus Christ. So uh, we have a divine mandate, we have a divine message and do you know this real message? Do you know Jesus Christ, who he is? We have a divine mentor too, verse, uh, last part of verse 20. Jesus Christ is telling, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And that's a great promise. That's a great promise in our life. What a promise Jesus Christ made in here. Uh, look at the last part of the verse. He said, Lo, I am with you always, unto the end of the world. You know, he did not tell that, well, until you die, disciples, I will be with you. Until you perish or until you finish your ministry, I will be with you. He said, I will be with you until the end of the world. What does it mean? It means either you are dead or alive, I will be with you. I will be with you always. You know, if you die right now or after two years, after 20 years, it doesn't matter. But Jesus Christ will be with you right after your death. And he will guide you through to heaven. Jesus Christ will be with us always. What a great promise. So we should not be ashamed. We should not be scared of anything to share the gospel to the people. There was a blind woman in, in South Africa and, and this blind woman was blind from her I mean, birth and she got saved somehow and she came to the pastor and she said, Pastor can I have a Bible? And pastor got shocked and pastor said, hey, what do you do with the Bible? He cannot see, he cannot read or write, what do you do with the Bible? And the, this woman said, well, pastor, I need that for a purpose, so bring me a Bible and find John 3.16 for me and underline it with the red ink. 
So pastor did that. Pastor find the Bible and find John 16 for her and underline it with red ink and gave it to her. And do you know this, what this blind woman did? You know, this blind woman went to in front of a boys' school and she was shouting for mercy, you know, begging for mercy. Hey, please, it's a blind woman here. Please help me. I need help. So these boys, they will come to her and then she would tell them, well, you know, I cannot see. I cannot read or write. Can you read this verse for me? John 3, 16. Underline with read ink. Please read, read these verses for me. Verse for me. And these boys will read this verse for her and some of these boys will get get saved. You know? So about 24 pastors and missionaries in South Africa, they have testified that they got saved through this blind woman's ministry. You know, God has given us everything. We have eyes, brother, and we have we have we have legs, we have everything. We can we can share the gospel, we can go anywhere to share the gospel. We are not willing to do that. You know, God has, if God has given you this burden to share the gospel to the uttermost part of the world, to the Philippines, to India, to Bangladesh, to Pakistan, to Nepal, to China, a lot of souls are dying without Christ. If God is burdening you right this moment to go share the gospel, you have to take the decision right now. Right now, brother. So if Lord calls you in the ministry, please follow the Lord. Probably in the Philippines, probably in the church. God wants you to help out this in, in the church. Probably God wants you to be a missionary to different places. And you have to tell yes to the Lord. You have to tell, you have to follow Lord's calling. You know, or probably God is burdening you. Probably you are not called, but God is bur burdening you to help out the missionaries to uh, evangelize over there at our most part of the world. And this is the time, brother, and you have to tell, yes, I will help out. I will pray for the missionaries. You know, the highest calling, the highest calling is to be saved, to have salvation, to know the assurance of salvation, that if you die right now, you will go to heaven. And probably some of you are not yet saved. And this is the call for the, for, from the Lord, that the Lord is calling you to be saved. And if Lord burdens you, please be saved right now. Please say yes, I will believe the Lord. Please follow the Lord. Thank you, church. Thank you, pastor, for this opportunity. And please pray for us, Pope. Amen.